Hey everyone, so I made a compilation, or actually Linda made a compilation of these um, Seth quotes on goals. And because I'm working on a really exciting goal myself, I got everything together that will help me, assist me in focusing and getting my goal uh, whenever it's time to experience it. So I made this for myself and for you. And if you would like to read along, then check the description for the link and it will lead you to a page on my website where all these quotes are um, copied into. Enjoy! Seth on goals. Your goals are usually conceptualized desires and once formed they act like magnets drawing from those vast fields of interrelatedness conditions best suited to their fulfillment those desires of yours that are fitting to your nature will automatically come to pass unless you block them through disadvantageous beliefs they cannot be blocked by others. If they seem to be blocked by others, that assumption is incorrect based on ignorance. When the intellect is properly used, it thinks of a goal and automatically arouses other levels of communication unknown to it so that all forces work together toward the achievement. When the intellect is improperly used, it is as if the intellect requires, feels required to somehow know or personally direct all of those inner processes. The intellect alone cannot bring about the fulfillment of those goals. It must count upon those other properties that it does indeed set in motion that spontaneous array of inner complexity, that orderly magic. The vital word is ease or effortlessness. Say, that is not my realm. I will leave the solution to that problem or goal where it belongs. Forget the questions and the mood that accompanies them in order to create the proper kind of atmosphere at another level of consciousness. If the proper creative and magical orientation is kept primarily in mind, other things will fall into place. Once you begin consciously working with the spacious present, help, support, solutions all begin to come, for you line up your conscious faculties with your unconscious ones in the most beneficial way. Even when nothing shows in physical reality, all the proper circumstances and conditions are being brought together. The intellect imagines a goal and imaginatively then attains it. Because the organization is different, you must forget cause and effect for things fall into place almost in a circular fashion. They may appear suddenly or they may not appear in the order in which you think they should because your vision must be limited in comparison to that available in the spacious present. All energy at the inner self's disposal is concentrated to bring about the results asked for by the conscious mind. Your inner self brings about your desire, but also considers it in the light of your entire life situation, so that it comes about in the best way and time possible. Your conscious goals fit in with your unconscious natural goals, then the primary ones given you at birth, you are right with yourself again. Expectancy 
and inner confidence always bring the best results with the least effort. The conscious mind does not have to have all the information required. It only needs to have the faith that means are available, even if those means are beyond its own scope of activity. Comparatively speaking, a small number of clearly felt connections with the spacious present can undo a year's doubts. Natural optimism is a power in the individual and in the world. It believes in triumph, in pleasant, unpredictable surprises, in unexpected solutions and joyful occurrences. The power of the universe is a personal one. When your intent is clear, events fall into place from the most minute to the most momentous that bring your desires to pass. To act in an independent manner, you must begin to initiate action that you want to occur physically. You change your focus you change what you consider significant. This is done by combining belief, emotion and imagination and forming them into a mental picture of the desired result. Concentrate upon the goal rather than the means of attaining it and you will attain it. It is your feelings and your impulses that you trust that will lead you to whatever you want. When you learn to trust your feelings and your impulses, something very strange happens. They turn quite trustworthy. Your clear intent sets forces working for you. The clear intent takes it for granted that the results will indeed be highly beneficial and not cause detriments. Thoughts of abundance affect the inner order of events. You can think of what you will do with the money, how you cause it to increase life's enjoyment, which will in turn benefit you and others. Such imaginings can be quite helpful. Ask and you shall receive. Ask half-heartedly and you shall receive in exactly that measure. I would like you to give suggestions before sleep that in one way or another during the dream state your knowledge will be increased. You doubt your ability to impress your desires upon the spacious present properly. Your faith is not secure here. Rupert, this is what Seth called Jane Roberts, because she was Rupert in a different life when they met, did not have to do anything of a conscious nature except to state his intentions. The physical planning carried out then is in line with the envisioned future and brings it about. You are at times ignoring significant clues that say your desires are being formed, seeing them instead as insignificant. Now, that causes an additional tension and impediments that slow down the process to whatever degree, which is exactly what you want to avoid. <laughs>